Hey, how's it going YouTube? All right, so I've been getting a million questions still about how I do the coaster modeling stuff and building the models, designing the models. And it's like so overcoming that I just I just gave up and was like, I don't, I don't have time to tell everyone what I do. And also what I do is not necessarily the right way. It's just how I do it. But with that said, I actually like making these videos showing people how to, you know, take no limits data and then bring it into a CAD environment and model. So I'm going to try to make a one-stop shop of everything that I've learned and let that just be out there in YouTube world so you can kind of take a look at what I do and see if you could take some of that information and apply it to whatever projects you're working on. When I started doing these models, there really wasn't one place to go to find out how to CAD design coaster components, parts, track, trains, because it's all proprietary. No one really wants to talk about it. Um, I'm not an expert. I don't really work professionally designing roller coasters or anything. So what I say and show is, you know, it needs to be taken with a grain of salt of like, this is just how I do it. It's not necessarily the right way. It's not necessarily something you should go and do if you want to make a real one. But if you want to make a model roller coaster or a 3D print a model, I think this is a really good, um, you know, forum where you can kind of dissect what I do and then take away that information and see how you can apply it to your models. So I made one video showing how I used uh, No Limits to export track data. Um, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to look at it. And I realize I go really fast because I just need somewhere to direct people when they say, how'd you do this? Because a lot of people are interested and I don't have time to, you know, type out and describe everything I'm doing. And there's really, you know, not anyone out there, or at least there's a few that kind of show what to do. And that's how I um, was able to figure it out. But I want to see if I can just dump as much information onto my channel. And if you use it, maybe just give me a shout out like, hey, I got to check out these tutorials from Matt and that will help me get, you know, a follower basis. So then it'll promote me to go and show more cool stuff. With that said, diving into some fun stuff with no limits. I'm going to show you not so much how to do layouts. There's a lot of great YouTubers out there that do awesome no limits layouts. I'm not an expert by any means. I just, you know, kind of dabble in it. I'm more in it for the post-processing of that data from No Limits. All right, so first off, you wanna get your data from No Limits. Professional tab, export track spline. You'll see a couple of options here. Let's start with the first one, distance between points. This is the distance in meters um, between the data points that you're extracting from your model. So in theory, the smaller the distance is, the more fine your data is, the larger your distance is, the more coarse your data is. And depending on how much data you wanna work with, um, you can set that here. I'm just gonna do 0.1 meters, just cause you get a lot of data points and you can do a lot more with that as you dissect the information. And then there's also two spline types. There's editor spline center rails. For this example, I'm gonna do center rails. But the difference between center rails and editor spline is that with the editor spline, um, you, you would actually get whatever heart line you're working with. In No Limits, you can actually set whatever your heart line is when you go and design your track because there's so much customization involved. Um, so, so with that said, um, when you go and design your layout, you can set that heart line, you can use, you, you can actually design based off the center rails um, a, a, and go between those two. So that's something you might wanna check out um, when you're designing your layout. But when I'm gonna export, I'm just gonna do center rails and hit okay. And we're just gonna save this to my desktop as a demo track, even though we all know it's Dr. Diabolical. We're gonna save it from text CSV file. And I know it's on my desktop and it's a demo track. We'll bring it in. Get a little preview here, we'll load it up. And there you go. Let's make it so you can see a bit better. So this is the data that you get from No Limits. Now let's take a look at what you're seeing here. So um, column A is just every number of the point that you've then extracted from No Limits and every point is 0.1 meters from the next. And that's what we set up in No Limits. Um, columns B, C, and D are very um, obvious. Position in the X, Y, and Z. And that is the point in 3D space of where you are on the ride at that point. Um, or position. So if you're at number 10, uh, you're at 39, 5, 20. Now, one thing I want you to remember is that in No Limits, your y-axis is your height. So 
keep that in mind when you go to CAD, Z isn't necessarily the height, and I want you to keep that in mind when you go and do that. So not much to really talk about for position X, Y, and Z because it's very obvious. But the questions usually come in on what the heck is all this other stuff? Well, these are other points that would help you create a unit vector, and that will give you direction. So we have, let's start with the front X, Y, Z um, and talk about what that is. That is basically the point from an origin to create um, a unit vector. And a unit vector is a vector with direction and a magnitude of one, which is awesome because then you can add a scalar that would then, you know, change the um, uh, magnitude of that vector. So what I did is I made a little drawing here to help kind of show you what we're talking about. So from your origin, which would be zero, 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 looking at just what Nolan would spit out. When you look at front, um, to get your x, y, and z for your front, it'd be negative 0.8, uh, negative 0 point, or point, negative 0 0.02, and then negative 0.5. And that would be your second point to create that vector, because you need to start with two points. Um, so you start with your origin, then you get your front. Same with the left and the up. So when you look at this, um, your left is basically the axis for your pitch, the front is the axis for your yaw, and then or sorry, roll, and then your up is for your yaw. And that's the axis. And you can use them for that interpretation, but you can also use them to also create your rail positions. You can do a lot of the design work in Excel knowing this. So if you go back to my other video, link in the description, when I say I'm gonna take my position and then add my left, what I'm essentially doing is making this origin now my position X, Y, Z in space, and then adding this left coordinate to it so that it would be this position plus the, the left X, Y, and Z. So it's basically just doing vector math. And you can do that for the front and the up. And we'll dive into more of what you can do with this data as we you know do more complex things and more um, complex track sections and track profiles and whatnot. But I just wanted to show you what this is. And let's kind of dive into one more thing. So knowing in the corner here, are up, front, and left, and our position, when you go and actually start looking at a track, and this is what I did here. So this is just a SOLIDWORKS track example. What these points are, and when you, when you visualize it, as they kind of populate on here, this is what you're getting. Um, I just, for demonstration purposes, put these on the um, cross tie locations, but they are actually, these coordinate systems are at every point that you extract from no limits. So this is very helpful in determining how you can design your track. It helps you determine the direction of travel. It helps you do a lot of things that we'll dive into. But the purpose of this video is to fundly, fundamentally understand what that data is um, and we'll kind of dive into what you can do with it in the future so that is really the point I wanted to get across what this data is and if you understand the vector math um, and what what you can do with this data it kind of opens up all sorts of doors so I wanted to really just deep dive what this is I didn't clearly explain it in the last video I kind of just plowed right through it and it probably didn't make sense um, and, and you might ask, well, yeah, you didn't use the up, you didn't use the front, you only use the left. Well, because to start modeling my track, I only needed, um, in, in theory, I really only need the center line and then the left rail. I don't really need the right. It doesn't really matter because as I set up my profile for my track, I, I can just mirror it. And that left, if you just, you know, just subtract it, it, it's just, it's the same, it's, it's parallel, it's just, just in the opposite direction. So that's why you can get away with it. Um, so yeah, for this video, fundamentals of, you know, what you're getting and there'll be more videos in this series or playlist of what, what other cool things you can do. Um, and just to get you excited, uh, one of the things I can show you what you can do with this is not only to model, um, like this arrow track you see here, but how would you model like an X2 track knowing these coordinates? And also knowing that depending on the secondary rail system, how much offsets you need um, um, on your on your cross tie to get the rotation of the wheels. Maybe you can comment below how you think you do that. But think about using your up X, Y, and Z and how you relate it um, 
on on your your track ties there. So something to think about because this is very important to understand if you want to do some other cool things. Um, with that, I'll let you go. Please like, subscribe. I'm gonna try to get more videos out. This video is starting from square one. This is the basics of what you get from No Limits. And I will see you next time. Support the channel. Um, and uh, buy coaster cutouts because those are cool. And I design them. And I love them. And I put a lot of work into them. And I hope it shows. So uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace.